So after seeing the intro you already know what are we creating today so let's get right into it. So as you can see here this effect works with Eevee and Psychos and if I move this empty around it will control the whole effect. So first let me show you the basic idea of this effect where I'm displacing some area based on the proximity and then I'm hiding it. Basically I'm uh, playing with the alpha here to create some Voronine fracture kind of thing and hide the whole mesh with it. So first let's create the displacement in the geometry nodes. For that what I'll do is I'm just gonna delete everything and start off uh, with a new scene then I'll add a whatever mesh I want here. I'm gonna add a torus here and subdivide it. Now that's okay, now I'm gonna create a new geometry node tree. Now right here what we want is a proximity object. So I'm gonna pin this and I'm gonna add a curve path. Then I can bring this path along the x-axis back a little bit and I'm gonna convert this object convert to mesh. So it's a mesh now. I'm gonna double click on that and rename it to controller. I'm gonna import it to my geometry nodes and then make some space. Now I'm gonna set this to relative and let's add a set position node here. And I'm gonna subdivide this once. Yeah, that will work. I'm gonna hide this and I'm gonna shade smooth that. Now if you want to, you can just remove the subdivision and subdivide it right here and make sure to set this smoothness to 1 so it's smoother after this object info we can add a proximity node geometry proximity and in the faces I'm gonna set it to points because if you see in the controller we don't have any faces we have just points and so it's obvious that we should select points here and I'm gonna get the distance and add a map range to this Map ranges just add it to control the values a little bit more and give us the result that we want. I'm gonna connect this to the offset right here, but you can see it's very screwed up, so let's add a few vector maths to correct that. I'm gonna add a vector math here and turn off this auto offset thing. I'm gonna duplicate this two times or one time, I think. Now, in here, I'm gonna set this to multiply and multiply it with the normals. Then after that what I'm gonna set that to multiply 2 Maybe you should set that to scale and the map range to the scale and I'm gonna duplicate this again and this one can be multiply And I'm gonna connect this to the scale right here and in there I'm gonna add a noise texture Now I'm gonna set all these vectors to 1 I think Yes All we have to do is now set the map range and make it something that works I'm gonna set this to smoother step and then play with the values. I'm gonna bring this empty line right here. Now you have got this proximity. What I wanna do is I wanna output this proximity to our shading, our shader editor, so that we can get something to work with and mix it with the Veroni to get some fracture kind of thing in here. Well, let's just uh, go to the modifiers tab right here, select that and I'm gonna get this map range or I think I can duplicate this map range with Control shift d and get this right here to the geometry. I don't want this to be same because uh, we may need to change this later. Now what I'm gonna do is uh, in the output attributes I'm going to uh, input any alphabet that I want. I'm going to input an A here, add a set material node, and select the material that you want. And go to the shading tab, unpin this, and select the material. Now right here, I'm going to add an attribute node and preview this. So type in A here, and go to the shading tab. Now you can see we've got something with the proximity here, which works fine right now. First I need to create something like a, a texture that we can work with and then we're gonna control its scale. So let's add a Veronai texture and now I'm gonna hit control T to use the object coordinates here and I'm gonna set this from F1 to distance to edge 
and in the distance I'm going to add a math node. I'm going to set this to greater than, then I'm going to duplicate this greater than node and set this to add. Now if I preview this, it's going to look like that but you have to play with the values to make it something that works. Let's say make it something like 0.52 and I'll play with this value which creates the whole fractal kind of effect. So now we can get our proximity which looks like that and connect it to this node and see what it does. Now you can see it's doing something here but it's uh, it's not perfectly fine so we can add a map range here to control the values. Now I'm gonna have to manipulate this map range a little bit and see what works for us. Let's invert it. And just like that, we're getting somewhere. I think this is working. Now let's, uh, we can play with the scale to get different results here. I'm gonna play with this greater than node to something like 0.49. This is gonna work. It looks pretty good. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna control the alpha with this value. So, get this and connect it to the alpha and preview our principle to BSDF. Now, you can see it's doing nothing, but uh, you know that in the import shading, you have to set the blend mode to alpha blend to make it work and turn off this, shade this smooth. And if you select the controller and move it along the y-axis, it's creating the whole effect which looks very cool. You know, wherever the proximity is, it's affecting that area and, and creating the whole thing. And we don't even need a self-fracture kind of process for that because it's shading and geometry nodes. I need the mesh that we have, like the, the base mesh too. So let's get that. I'm gonna add a join geometry, pretty basic stuff here. I'm gonna connect the base geometry right here to the join geometry and now we got it. And then I'm gonna add another material for that. So duplicate this and select your next material. We have a little bit of job to do here too. So I'm gonna duplicate my set position node and put it right here because we want the original mesh to be a little bit like you can see it's intersecting with the mesh that has the effect on it so I'm gonna go right here and duplicate a few of these nodes three of these nodes I'm gonna hit shift D to duplicate them and connect that to the offset right here then in this node I'm gonna set all of these to 1 and bring the scale down to something like 0 0.001 and bring it down a little bit more until it's not intersecting and this is looking very good. So that is the whole effect. If I move it, it's building the whole thing and looks pretty cool, right? And the viewport is fast and we don't get any lags. And you can change the object too to any mesh you want. I can add a UV spear and it just works. I'm gonna delete my terrace, shade that smooth. And if I move my controller, it's working. So if we go to the shading tab and select the material and right here before the Verona Live texture we can add a mix RGB to just break this texture up a little bit and in the color too I'm gonna add a noise texture get this vector and connect it to the vector now you can see here we got something like that now I'm gonna bring this factor back a little bit until it looks good it to me and scale this up just like that. Now that's looking very good. I can get the empty now and move it around and the effect looks very very cool. You can see this is starting to look very amazing. Of course you can control the scale of it and all sort of the proximity and stuff like that. So that was it for this tutorial. Very simple one and I'll see you in my next tutorial.